Hey everyone, my name is David Ng, aka Photo Ng, and yesterday my friend let me borrow his X-Pro1 and take it for a few street photos. Um, I was super excited to try this camera out. It's gotten a little bit of hype recently, I guess because of its uh, older sensor that it's got in it. It's a CMOS X-Trans1 sensor, which was I think the first of its kind in the Fujifilm lineup, but um, anyways, people are saying that it, its images are a little bit more film-like, which is becoming more trendy these days, and plus it's just a gorgeous camera. Look at this thing. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got the 27 millimeter pancake lens on it. I don't know if you can see it there. But um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to try it out for myself, um, see if, if, uh, if it was worth buying. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> You can, you can pick it up for about $300, $400 on eBay now. Yeah, uh, I was just really excited to shoot with it. Uh, I already own an X-H1, uh, X100V. I also used to have the X-T2, X-T10. So I have a bit of experience with the Fujifilm cameras and I just wanted to see if, it really, if I could really tell the difference with the cameras that I already own and just have some fun shooting with it. So I did make a little bit of a POV video, which we'll get into right here. So all the photos in this video were pretty much straight out of camera except for a little bit of exposure correction and maybe a little bit of white balance uh, correction as well. I saw this guy exiting the 7-Eleven and he saw me taking a photo of him. Fortunately he was a really good sport so he let me take a, a nice portrait. Yeah, dude. I switched to black and white or the monochrome film profile. I think it looks really good, especially with city architecture. AT&T Park in downtown Dallas is still relatively new, so there are always a ton of people here taking selfies, so I just really like taking pictures of them. And of course, you can't leave this area without taking nice silhouette shots with people in these big bright lights. One thing I like to do when I do street photography, I always love taking photos of dogs. I think it, it's uh, more comfortable than taking photos of people. This dog in particular kind of freaked out afterwards. It was really funny. Saw this cool Ferrari. Um, you know me, I love taking photos of cars, so couldn't pass up this opportunity. I 
knew that he was going to drive straight, so I wanted to get a panning shot. I just quickly ran over a few feet away and uh, switched my settings. This is probably my favorite photo from the entire session. I'm going to just switch to black and white and just try to get a few architecture shots. I was walking down I really liked the lighting from this, this sign and unfortunately there weren't really anybody nearby so I kind of had to wait for a little bit and fortunately somebody actually walked right in. So those were all the shots that I took from this photo walk, but there were a few others that I wasn't able to capture with my GoPro. So I'll just run through them right here. I have to say I really do like the colors coming from this camera. The standard film profile I think looks really good, and the black and white images also look, look, look awesome. I really never shot with standard before, but I'm actually a huge fan of it now, so I might do that more from now on. So um, here's some of my thoughts after shooting with it, only, again, only for a couple of times. But uh, first of all, you know, the aesthetics, it looks amazing, especially with this nice red strap. I really like the strap actually that my friend has. I might have to pick up one of these for myself. It's an artist and an artist strap. It feels expensive, but, um, and you know, just looking at it with this 27 millimeter pancake lens on it, it just looks fantastic. It looks kind of like a bigger version of my X100V. And ergonomically, it, it also feels great to hold. It's not, 
I have pretty small hands, so maybe that's why, but the grip is, is certainly large enough for me. It has a little bit of a thumb rest as well, uh, which works great. It's really easy to use one-handed, uh, which is important to me. So um, ergonomically, I think it's also really great. There are a couple of, of issues I did have with shooting with this camera. One is the there's no front command dial, which I was really missing, which I really got used to on my X-H1 and X-100V. But the, the biggest issue I have is the optical viewfinder. The framing was completely off, um, and so I wouldn't recommend actually using it, which is a huge shame because that's pretty much the reason why you would get one of these cameras is for the optical viewfinder. I don't know if they fixed the, the issue in, in you know, the X-Pro2 or X-Pro3 or if they, uh, or if it's just to this, this particular camera itself, but um, yeah, I tested it on my X100V, didn't really have that issue. The EVF and the rear LCD screen I thought were fine. Um, I didn't really have any issues with that. And so, yeah, uh, those are the main issues that I had with shooting with this camera. The, the image quality, which is kind of the whole reason why I wanted to test the camera. You know, hopefully the images speak for themselves. Images coming out of this camera are still really good. Uh, which goes to show, you know, you don't need 100 megapixels to have great images. The 16 megapixels were perfectly fine. Um, especially if you're not really doing any sort of professional work, which I'm, I'm really not. I'm just kind of shooting for fun. So, so yeah, I thought the images were, were fantastic. The X-Pro1 doesn't have all of the film simulations. It really only has a few. Um, it doesn't have classic chrome, which I use a lot. And so, to be honest, for, you know, JPEG quality images, I, I kind of prefer the X100V. So am I going to pick this camera up for myself? Um, you know, I, I don't think I will just yet. I might pick it up later if I have, you know, extra money, but I honestly, <laughs> I really don't have a need for it, unfortunately. Um, my X-H1 works perfectly fine. I really like my X100V. Um, the, the images coming out of this camera I think are still great even today. So I think it is a good buy if you're looking to get into the Fujifilm system. If you're only shooting for fun, if you want to get into street photography, I think it's a great option. Especially if you need a camera with an interchangeable uh, lens on it. Also, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to my friend Tori for letting me borrow his X-Pro1. I'll link his Instagram down below. Definitely go follow him. His photography is, is amazing. So comment down below. On, on what you think about this camera. If you already own an X-Pro1, if you're thinking about getting one, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.